Creating a working history of Nickelodeon has been a huge project, one I've been very happy to take on, but due to my limited resources, there are naturally going to be holes in that history, and because I'm kind of a dope in general, I do make the occasional mistakes. As time goes on, however, I stumble on the new information, something thought lost becomes available, and my wonderful viewers manage to correct me or even dig up some amazing Nickelodeon artifacts of their own. So, every once in a while, I'm going to throw out an addendum video that offers corrections and additions. And today we're going to be focusing on the shows of Nickelodeon 1979. First off, you know that Nickelodeon promo footage I use with the mime reading some kind of Nickelodeon magazine? I always had doubts that, that was just a prop, more likely an actual promotional item printed up by Warner Cable. I threw it out there that I was searching for it on Twitter, but never actually expected to discover a copy. And I didn't. But Ethan did and so much more. So, ladies and gentlemen, I give you the press kit from the very first year the network went on the air back in 1979. Yes, the press kit for Nickelodeon's first year. This is an amazing bundle with promotional material, articles, pictures, a custom envelope because 1979 was the International Year of the Child, and super valuable for my work, a list of staff profiles and Nickelodeon's very first broadcast schedule. This is an amazing bundle, and Ethan was kind enough to scan a lot of its contents for me. And as I poured through the details, I made a few very interesting discoveries. For example, hey, there's a lost Nickelodeon 79 show. Inside of what turned out to be another version of that promotional magazine in the mime short, there's a brief section about a show called Pocket Money. Pocket Money, a show that will cover everything from lollipop factories to youth and politics. And that's it. That's the only reference to a show called Pocket Money in the entire bundle. No reference to it in my research material. I found no mention of it in all the Nickelodeon nostalgia communities on the internet. So, what was it? Very, very hard to say. Maybe it was a show Warner Cable got under development but decided to drop before premiere. Maybe it never even got that far, it was just a name Warner threw into the mix to make it seem like they had more programming than they did. My personal theory is that Pocket Money was a working title for By The Way, the other vague and elusive show from Nickelodeon 79. By the way, is name dropped in a lot of the other material in the press kit, but not in this specific magazine. Speaking of by the way, thanks to the schedule included in the press kit, we can learn that by the way was an hour-long program. Well, that's... that's something. We also have a partial list of some of the serials that aired on Nickelflix. Junior G-Men, 1940. A street gang teams up with the FBI in order to stop anti-American saboteurs. The Whispering Shadow, 1933. Bela Lugosi stars in this crime drama about a mysterious killer who murders people by radio control. The Mysterious Squadron, 1933. A rogue band of pilots make attacks on the construction of a dam. The Galloping Ghost, 1931. A college football player is thrown off his team when he becomes connected to a local gambling ring. Determined to clear his name, he goes in to bust them up. With those on the roster, it shows us that Nickelflix was not just looking for marquee value. I've put some of the most interesting press kit material in a gallery linked in the description below, along with a link to Ethan's original video. Ethan's a fun guy, go check out his channel. Speaking of things brought to my attention by viewers, longtime commenter Christopher pointed me to this footage of the closed circuit television system at the Otani Hotel, the system that inspired Steve Ross in the creation of Cube. You can see they didn't actually change that much in the design when bringing it over to the States. Thanks Christopher, link to that video is also in the description. Now, you might remember this weird joke in my pinwheel video, where I'm listing off some of the animated shorts Pinwheel used to air. Emily, a French production about a little girl and her pet hedgehog, Chappy Chapo. 1974, a French dot motion production about two clay blob siblings who will give you nightmares. But not nearly as many nightmares as the clock man. is coming for you. <clears throat> so, what was that? 
Mostly, it was an in-joke to hardcore pinwheel fans, but with some recent news concerning this Clockman, I might as well explain what it is. Clockman was a bit of an internet urban legend dating back to about 2004, when a few people insisted that they saw an animated short on Pinwheel where a monstrous bearded man climbs out of a wall clock and kidnaps a child. It definitely had a creepypasta vibe about it, but enough people insisted it was real that it was eventually bumped up from an urban legend to possible lost media, and people have been searching for it pretty hard since 2016. Well, December 2017, five months after my Pinwheel video, they found it. Clockman has been rediscovered. Clockman is actually a 1976 short from Czechoslovakia called O Paradivi Sally, or just Sally in the English version. The short is about a young girl named Sally who loses one of her nice gloves given to her by her mother. A local wizard offers to magically create a replacement glove, but says Sally must tell her mother what happened. If she doesn't, she'll be forced to work for him. Sally doesn't tell her mother, and we get the infamous scene. When Sally went to bed that night, she hoped the wizard would forget about their deal. But the wizard did not forget. He picked her up and carried her to his magic chamber. The short's tone is a lot more whimsical than the urban legend would lead you to believe, but then again, this is a story about a man climbing out of a clock and kidnapping a little girl. There's a lesson about responsibility and all that, but also, you know, little girl kidnapping. You can see why this scared some kids. There is still debate as to if it actually aired on Pinwheel. While people are pretty sure it aired on Nickelodeon at some point in the early 80s, it may have aired on Hocus Focus, it may have aired on Special Delivery, it could have aired in a whole bunch of different contexts. Unless we get footage of its actual American airing, we may never know, but it'll likely be associated with Pinwheel for the rest of its existence. There's a link to the English version of Sally, as well as the Lost Media Wiki page on Clockman, in the description below. Speaking of Hocus Focus and identifying shorts, the ever helpful Christopher pointed out that one of the animated shorts seen in Hocus Focus's opening is 1963's The Great Toy Robbery, directed by Jeff Hale. Santa Claus gets held up by a bunch of bandits out in the Old West. Not much to it, really, but it's a fun little cowboy comedy that shows off Hale's style and talents. Jeff Hale would end up being known for his animation work on Sesame Street, especially his pinball, typewriter, and ringmaster shorts. One minor correction. In my video on By The Way, I referenced the PBS show Shining Time Station, somehow unaware that it actually did air on Nickelodeon in 2000, meaning it's going to get a proper episode of Nick Knacks somewhere down the line. My point in bringing it up in that video still stands, but I may have written it a little differently if I had double checked. Finally, in my video on Brad Williams and Hocus Focus, I brought up these pictures I had found of Brad Williams dressed up and sitting in an H.G. Wells style time machine. I said I wasn't sure what this project was, but I was soon informed that in 1988, Brad Williams contributed to a book called The Complete Time Traveler, A Tourist's Guide to the Fourth Dimension. Well, Brad Williams is one of my top 10 favorite things ever, so I had to grab a copy, and man, this book is a lot of fun. It's framed as a guidebook sent from the future. It's even copyrighted 2038, which I didn't even know you could do that. Outside of the pictures, I don't know what Brad's exact involvement was, but it's still worth picking up for painting this picture of a future society where people pick up time machines like they might pick up a new car. Not a lot to say about it, really. Just breezy, light fun. Dang it, Brad. You're the gift that keeps on giving. I miss you. Nick, 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 Nick,